Welcome back to some new malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of our request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Pineapple Pizza. I used to work at a large pizza chain in my last year of high school. We had a fairly simple pricing policy. The price was the same for any of our menu items, one of which was a four topping pizza, for which you could choose any toppings up to four. There was an extra charge for adding extra toppings, obviously. One customer came in and wanted a Hawaiian with extra pineapple. This is a total of three toppings, ham and double pineapple. So I replied, so would you like ham and double pineapple? To prompt them for the lower priced order. Oh no, not at all. I want Hawaiian with extra pineapple. Didn't you hear me? Okay, Hawaiian with extra pineapple it is. I rang it up and charged them for a menu pizza with an extra topping and they happily paid. This would happen 3 or 4 times a month with different people, so I never pushed beyond that one prompt. A lot of customers picked up on it and were happy to save a few bucks. The others paid for their lack of listening skills. The next story is called Don't want to see them anymore. I previously worked at a place where I was hourly but should have been salary. They later made me salary and had to work odd hours at times due to the demands of the job. Despite the extra time that I worked, I was still expected to be clocked in at 8 and to leave no earlier than 5. All while making sure I got as little overtime as possible, because they didn't want to pay overtime. They also expected me to take lunch at a predetermined time, even though it conflicted with the nature of the work I did. Every time I clocked in late, clocked out early or clocked out for lunch at the wrong time, this was the bulk of the issue. A report was generated from HR and sent to my supervisor. Despite making the case that it was basically impossible to adhere to these requirements, my supervisor point blank told me, I don't want to see these anymore. In reference to the report, they were raving around in the air about my comings and goings on the time clock. So I said, okay, I'll make sure you don't have to see them anymore. I then walked down to HR and informed them that my supervisor was tired of seeing these reports and no longer wanted to see them. I told them verbatim what I was told and they accepted it without question, as I said it came straight from my supervisor. Surprisingly, they didn't double check the request at all. They simply stopped sending the reports to my supervisor. To be fair, they were tired of sending the reports and knew the situation was not tenable. After that, things were great. My supervisor was happy and had always been happy with my work. Many months down the road, I spoke with one of my salaried co-workers about it, when they remarked that our supervisor hadn't been griping about the reports in a while. So I told them what had transpired. They remarked, I don't think that's what they meant when they said that. The third story is called Same Punishment. I'm working for a low-level corporation with about 450 employees. I've been there for 5 years and have risen to the top of my department's productivity levels. Management had a policy that latecomers would be penalized, but that lateness could be excused under some circumstances. I was good at my job and I actually loved doing it, so I was more or less a dream employee. I always showed up to work 20 to 30 minutes early because I like to sit in the lunchroom and prepare for my day. Management knew I was almost always early, so if I was late from time to time, and such instances were rare, they let it slide, as there was always a valid reason. For some other employees, this latitude wasn't applied. Chronically late employees would get written up and not have their constant lateness excused. They'd complain, of course, but management was firm. They ran an actual meritocracy, where more productive employees would experience preferential treatment. Then the business gets sold and we get new management, an international corporation only interested in buying us up, stripping us down and selling off the company. Of course they denied this constantly, but the fact that over the next two years they stripped us down and sold off the company proved they were lying. New management comes in and has to make a bunch of idiotic changes. One of those changes is that no reasons for being late are accepted, regardless of validity. Anyone over 5 minutes late for work would be written up. At the team meeting where this is explained, I asked, so if someone is 5 minutes late and someone else is 3 hours late, the punishment is the same? And they said yes. From that day on, I stopped coming in early. 
I'd still had to work at my usual time, but I sat in a local coffee shop instead of my work's lunchroom. This meant that my work was missing out, because in the past I would often help out by answering questions and even starting work early if needed. Because I loved my job, and the old management were wonderful bosses. No more of that under new management. In fact, if something happened, like unexpectedly bad traffic, and I was going to end up being a few minutes late, I'd just say screw it. If being 3 hours late is the same punishment as 5 minutes late, I'd just decide to come in later. I'd call work to tell them I was delayed, then go out and have a leisurely meal in a restaurant, run some personal errands, go shopping, even see a movie etc. Depending on my mood and how bad the new management had been lately, what would have been a 7 minute lateness on my part would end up seeing me roll in 3 hours late. Sure, it cost me a few bucks, but I made almost as much in bonuses than I did in hourly salary, so missing out on a few hours here and there didn't bother me too much. I'd come in 3 or 4 hours late, and my new bosses would be fuming. Nothing they could do though, but write me up for the basic tardy. The same as they would have if I was 5 minutes late. The next story is called Round Share. I work on salary, which means I get paid the same amount if I work 6 hours a week or 65 hours. But if I build enough time to my client, I might get a bonus, so I try to push things towards the higher end when possible. I do database development, which involves a lot of work at the beginning of the project, when things are being set up, and very little near the end of the project. I'm not allowed to make major changes late in the project, because it means everybody else has to redo their work. I'm currently in one of those late stage phases, where they only need me to show up 2 or 3 times a week just to fix minor things or answer questions. So I put out an announcement that I am available for other projects. I know I've had it easy, so I'm telling all of these directors that I can give them 40 hours a week on their projects, but I also need 5 to 10 hours a week for my current one. I immediately got 3 offers, 2 of which were for proposals, and one was for sold work, where I would start immediately. Every one of them says that I'm only to build 40 hours a week on their project, which means that I only work 40 hours a week. Company policy is that if I'm not billing, I'm not working. But some directors try to cheat this in order to boost their own personal profit margins and bonuses. So given that I'm offering 40 hours a week and they are asking for 40, we are good. Right? Wrong. Every one of the directors demanded to talk to my current boss in order to ensure that I would leave his project and solely work on theirs. That's not how we do things. There's no way my current boss is going to let me disappear entirely because the client would notice and be very upset. So because these directors won't share, they are left scrambling to find an expensive third party contractor to fulfill their obligations. Meanwhile, I read webcomics all day and quietly mourn the loss of my bonus. The last story is called Leaf Request. I work as the sole IT guy in a firm with about 75 people that is part of a larger nationwide mother firm. Our local firm has an ongoing agreement with another local firm that we play backup for each other in case either one needs help, backup, knowledge sharing, whatever. This has been the case since 2009. I work for this firm since 2002. We have this generous leave package that builds the longer we work here. Astada has 180 hours per year leave and someone with 20 plus years has 240 hours. I have that. Because we have this much leave, I'm of a mind not to be all too strict with the when and the how. I'm single and have no kids, so I'm happy to let others with kids take priority to end the school holidays. As such, for the last 15 something years, I have always taken the bulk of my leave in September and October and the rest on Fridays. The only rules we have regarding when and how we take leave are no more than 6 weeks together, you can transfer more than 7 days to the next year, and leave must be approved, which it almost always is. Enter my big boss. As per usual, I put in my leave request for September and October, somewhere in May. This gets approved. Around August we got news from our hardware vendor that they will be installing our new server cluster at the end of September. I talked it over with Big Boss and agreed to move my leave to February and March of the next year. I don't mind too much. He is happy, I am happy and we go ahead and plan it all in. Enter my department head. Since I am a one man department, 
but corps are gonna be corps. I have a department head who oversees my department along with a few others. Somewhere end of September, he walked into my office and asked me when I was planning to take the bulk of my leave. I told him about the server cluster install and that my leave was moved. Now, one cannot be a department head or part of Mangelmand and still be reasonable, right? So he told me that since I won't be taking my leave this year, it will be forfeit. I tell him I have an agreement with Big Boss, to which he states that he talked about it with Big Boss and that the arrangement won't work since he didn't approve it. I take my phone and call Big Boss. He states that, indeed, my leave will not be approved and can't be moved to next year. So I tell him okay. I was mad, not just angry. I took a half day and went home and mulled things over. With age comes wisdom and I know not to take decisions when I am that angry. The next day I go in and ask for a leave statement from my OIHR department that has a counter of all our leave and, more importantly, overtime. I had around 700 hours of overtime standing, accrued over the years, and 220 hours of leave. So I put in 5 weeks leave, 1 week overtime, 5 weeks leave, 1 week overtime, and so on, till I landed in the first week of January. Then I put in the remaining overtime and landed at the end of February. Next to that, I send in my resignation and three months notice, which I planned exactly on the last day of my leave. Not half an hour later, my big boss and department head are at my desk, asking me about it. I told them that since the department head had told me I couldn't transfer the leave, I would be taking it this year. And since the agreement to move my leave was broken, I felt I didn't have another choice but to look for other work where agreements in fact were honored. I asked them what rule of the workers manual regarding leave I had broken and if any, could they point it out? After that talk I went home and the waiting game began. Big Boss called me the next morning on my work cell, asking me to come in. Sorry, no, I'm on leave, happy to make a pot of coffee if you want to drop by. So he drops by. Things get talked about. Seems his department head wasn't entirely upfront with him, although he wasn't innocent either and he wants to make things right. My 6 months leave stayed in place and he offered to match the offers I would get from other firms to keep me on board, within reason. All in all, I still work for the same firm, with a 15% wage increase. I don't do overtime anymore, neither does my laptop come home with me and my work phone stays at work too. I still do my job to the best of my abilities, but at the end of the day, if my hours are done, I go home. And my leave gets planned around my preference too, no more shifting around other people's leaves. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.